It's the Cube, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to VMworld 2015. We're here at Moscone North. This is the Cube. The Cube goes out, we extract the signal from the noise. Brian Gracie and I are really thrilled. We have AJ Patel here, he's the Senior Vice President of Product Development for VMware Cloud Services. The future. Absolutely. Is cloud. Yeah. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks for the So, program. big event here. We saw Monday the announcement of you know, the hybrid cloud, the strategy, you know, laying out a lot of vision, Absolutely. a lot of products that you can get today, a lot that you know, have a little roadmap to them, but huge crowd. I think the number, Robin told us yesterday, 23,000. Absolutely. Great energy, so congratulations. How do you feel? Feel great. A little bit tired, but feel great. It's the excitement, the momentum. It's really a great conversation with customers, partners. It's been a good VMware. How, how have you spent your time here? Are you doing customer meetings, presentations? You know, it's a uh, lot of press interviews, mm -hmm. uh, four presentations, a uh, lot of service provider meetings. Uh, I'm also responsible with Bill for the vCloud Air Network business. Mm -hmm. uh, it's refreshing to see that we've kind of struck the right balance between having our own service but also enabling our service provider community. So, 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 what, so talk about the scope of your responsibilities. Absolutely, so up. I work for Bill Fathers. I'm mm -hmm. part of the vCloud, vCloud Air, our cloud service is BU. Uh, we have two roles. Uh, we are a cloud provider ourselves, which is vCloud Air, with presence of presence in the North America, EMEA, Japan, and the latest edition being Australia. So in this case, we're standing up a VMware operated cloud and we're running that. We also provide all our IP that we build for our cloud. We make that available to our service provider partners. We have 4,000 service provider partners who leverage VMware technology to run a VMware powered cloud. So for us, success is delivering on both fronts, VM, we cloud air as a business, but also VMware powered cloud, and owning the public cloud market with VMware technology. And that's really my challenge. So you're responsible <laughs> for, for strategy, the, the Product offering. Product service, you, you run p and &L. Absolutely, yeah. so with Bill, I'm responsible for running the service of we cloud air. And then my partner, Jeff Waters, uh, who works for Bill, is responsible for the vCloud Air Network, where we take my software and monetize that through the vCloud Air Network to help them power their cloud as well. Okay, so you made, made some announcements this week. Maybe you could take us through those. Absolutely. And, and in fact, you know what, why don't we back up? Can you kind of give us the, 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 the journey of you know, the, the offering? Yeah. Absolutely. So vCloud Air, a two-year-old service. Uh, when we first started, uh, you know, North America, uh, predominantly with three data centers, mm -hmm. Uh, we extended to five, we added our FedRAM certified data center. So on one scale, we started to provide the geographic reach. We opened our UK data center, then Germany, joint venture with SoftBank, and then a joint venture with uh, Telstra for uh, uh, Australia and Japan. Yep. So we've got the geographic reach. We've been, we were able to kind of serve directly 80, 80 some odd percent of the core, core cloud markets. So the tier one cloud markets in the regions there, we, we're going native uh, in those markets as a service provider. Yep. We also then took our technology, which is VCD, which is vCloud Director, and we were just rolling out an announcement of our 8.0 product this quarter, which is our cloud stack, our on-demand platform, our cloud platform, make that available to our service provider partners. And with the rest of the partners, we have 99% coverage of the global uh, cloud market today. So at VMware today, I'm pretty proud to say you can get a VMware cloud service anywhere in the world. 99% coverage. So what about the reactions to what was announced this week? And what's the you know, I the think from a, the tech weenies in us, we loved Remotion across uh, on-prem and public yeah. cloud. Uh, that, that applause of having the VM move from on-prem live into a uh, vCloud Air. I had a couple of customers say, you know what, I've been asking that for three years, it's good to see you finally delivering on that. A hard technology problem, but that was probably the most sexy announcement, if you will, from a technology perspective. It, On the second side, it's all about containers. And, and, right. and that example, I asked Pat, because I asked him to square the circle for me. I don't know, Brian, if you heard this question. Whereas, you would always hear, for instance, Joe Tucci and Paul Gelsinger talk about the advantage that the hyperscalers had because of homogeneity, right. yet you've said your strategy is to manage heterogeneous cloud environments. Well, how do we do that? And, and Pat's point was, well, for certain things, we have to have homogeneity, and I'm presuming right. that demo is so, one, where you've got to have homogeneity. Right? I, to me, the world's going to be about what I call compatibility, right? How do I make sure that I have a compatible cloud? And it's going to be infrastructure compatibility, and then more importantly, application compatibility. If I cannot make my application workload portable, how am I going to move the workload to where I need it to run? So the big technical challenges are making the workload portable. 
at the infrastructure level, because of the hypervisor and some of the work we've done on NSX, et cetera, we are making the infrastructure programmable and abstracting away the workload from the infrastructure. We're decoupling the binding of the application and the infrastructure from the physical infrastructure. And then the next step is how do I make it easily available on any cloud, which is the work we're starting to put in. When you cloud. announced uh, the offering a couple years ago, you made a big deal that look, we are going to share the IP Correct. with our ecosystem. Right. Um, you really laid down that commitment. You got a lot of questions about it. Absolutely. You know, probably got some heat too, but, but how has that worked out? How has that evolved? You know, I'll give us a, a passing grade. I think we could do better there, uh -huh. to be honest. Uh, where we've done a great job is we've invested in the people. We've come up with something called a vCloud Air kit, Technology Kit. We've taken our best practices on how to build it. We released VCD 8.0, which is a capability. But our customers want that remotion capability tomorrow. So the lag between us having something we demo to getting in the hands of service provider, we need to shrink that time. So the work we need to put in place is really delivering on the agility and the speed by which they can absorb this technology and stand up in their own cloud environment. Right. Uh, the area we've done better is we've made, made possible a new program called an MSP program, a managed services provider program, where a smaller cloud provider doesn't want to stand up their own cloud, can resell a vCloud Air service. So it's, it's, I would say, a good passing grade more work to be done. Yeah, you know, one of the big themes this week is one cloud. It's any application, anybody in one cloud. That one cloud for you is, is not only, you know, vCloud Air, it's the vCloud Air network. Help us understand how, how big is the vCloud Air network, not just the number of partners, because everybody's got lots of partners, but, you know, put it in proportion. How, we, we know roughly how big vCloud Air is that, that VMware runs. What, is, what does that partner network look like? Is it, is it the typical 80-20 model where 80% of that no. business is, what, what does it look like? How big is that? So, so I don't have the exact numbers to share, but if I were to do a back of the napkin, I'm going to speculate, right? Uh, I would say the vCloud Air network plus vCloud Air together is probably bigger or as big as Azure or someone like that in a public cloud market. It's a significant public cloud presence. If we're not number two or number three from overall public cloud market spend, so let's assume it's a $50 billion market spend. I would say, let's say uh, you know, Amazon's 30% of it. The next 20% I bet is a vCloud Air network plus vCloud Air. It's of that size and scale. Representative, it's a ma major provider. So in the mix today, uh, vCloud Air is growing fast and is a big portion but the numbers will always be, I believe vCloud Air Network will be a bigger portion than vCloud Air at any given time, because the whole pillars need to grow in parallel as the market is exploding. Hmm. Am I correct that the differentiation really is kind of what you talked about Monday, is the ability to take that huge install base right. that you have and enable it to do what, what the, the vision of the promise of the hybrid cloud That's has right. always been. I mean, it, nobody else really does that. I mean, Amazon refuses to do that. Right. Microsoft kind of has, trying to do that, you know, <laughs> so maybe can do yeah. that at some point, and yep. uh, that's really your wheelhouse. Can you talk about the differentiation? Yeah. So what? What? Uh, when we first started, our first customers would kick our tires, right? And they would use it for dev test, and they say, you know, this stuff looks pretty good. They said, what if I take some of my VMs that are not protected and protect them in in uh, vCloud Air? And we started to see DR really take off for us. That was kind of a killer use case. Mm -hmm. Now IT is being asked to really look at not building out any more data center spaces. They're saying, guys, we cannot afford to build infrastructure. And the natural choice for IT as they're starting to come into the age of cloud is, who's the best choice? I'm already using VMware on-prem. They're starting to think about a data center extension use case or a data center replacement use case. They're looking at vCloud as that strategic cloud. So the exciting news for this week has been the number of customers saying in the next two years, I want to be out of the data center business. You're my destination cloud. Let's solve those hybrid use cases to move data between VMs between the clouds is really what we're seeing the most exciting part. So it's that ease of moving workloads is really the exciting bit. So at SiliconANGLE Wikibon, we have some experience. We have a, a, you know, the CrowdChat relationship. The CrowdChat platform is, a, is an app. That's right. It, it, we used to run it in you know, the colo, That's it. buy our own servers, and it was a nightmare, so we decided to go to the cloud. We went to Amazon, and our developers you know, took Absolutely. some time to get it up there. It was painful, right. but once it was up and running, it worked well. So we have some experience with the various clouds, and one of the things we found, because people are always, because we're SiliconANGLE and theCUBE, right. and they're, hey, we should run in our cloud. And when we go to investigate, we find that certain things aren't there, you know, things like Elastic Beanstalk aren't, aren't mature, uh, you know, other little things are just in beta, et cetera. Um, I wonder if you could give us an indication of how mature the cloud air is from that standpoint, you know, and how you can you know, expect, what gives you confidence that you can compete with that pace that Amazon has? You know, we often get uh, dinged in terms of the breadth of capability that Amazon offers. It is pretty impressive. The rate at which they're innovating, very impressive. 
when you go back to the enterprise workloads and look at the customer use cases, there are probably 10 or 15 services that are critical. Mm -hmm. The two big gaps we had was we didn't have a database service, RDS. We didn't have an RDS competitor out there. We just announced SQL Air this week. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a good object service. If you're starting to build something natively in the cloud, you need an object service. The ability to start to bridge these key gaps, we're doing that today. And Gartner has a metric where they measure the IaaS capability of each of the vendors. I'm happy to say that if we were to benchmark today, we're ahead of Google, right behind Azure, to be capability-wise a complete IaaS platform. And, and, and the, the, what some people would call the PaaS piece of that, that database as a service is part of the infrastructure Absolutely. as a Absolutely. service, is that right? So, so we're so starting to add these application services. This yeah. is my background. Yeah, I come yeah. from Oracle. I ran okay. Oracle's middleware business. We're starting to build both organically our services, but more importantly, VMware is a partner-friendly company. Our customers want their best of breed on-prem ISVs to work in the cloud. So the services like Jenkins for continuous integration as a service. They want to use Perforce, if that's the source code management system, to be available as a repository on vCloud. So our strategy is to enable our ISV ecosystem make them available. So you won't see everything coming from the VMware factory, but the ecosystem will deliver best of class solutions and services on vCloud Air. Well, and those are the announcements. Well, we Oracle's made. an interesting you know, workload. I mean, you have demand from customers. I mean, you Abs certainly have a lot of do, guys virtualizing Oracle. We were one of the first to say virtualize Oracle with VMware, damn the torpedoes, and oh, it's worked out great. We have a lot of interest customers. there. Unfortunately, Oracle has the licensing practices that forces them in more in a dedicated environment. So we can support Oracle, but unfortunately, because of, of their licensing restriction, we have to set them in a dedicated cloud. Well, you need specialized hardware to run That's Oracle. Now, the, now they may relax that over time. I mean, it's been their practice in the past to do that, Absolutely. right? I mean, so you would expect that as so that occurs. So our customers today use two things. They either leave the data on-prem and take the web tier in the front end and then connect back to a, to a database like Oracle. Sometimes they're just moving out of the Oracle. They're yeah. using a MySQL cluster to run their web scale websites. Well, I mean, that's the choice, though, that Larry has to make. At the point at which the customer says, okay, if you want to lock me into the whole that's Oracle right. approach at the risk of losing my database business, and then if that happens, then Oracle will loosen up on those requirements. That's how the Oracle behaves. The you customers know, will working. drive them. Yeah. We're ready to catch them when they're ready. Yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? So, so if I looked back at, at, at uh, Amazon Web Services two years in, only a couple of services, a handful of them, you guys are two years in, you know, a handful of services. Um, but if I look at who their customer is today, it's, it's directly focused on developers. That's I mean, they're right. going after developers. Uh, the number of services they come out, I mean, it's 10, 15, 20, 30 a year. How do you, who, who is your customer? What's your developer story? Because right now, I mean, if I'm talking about moving VMs, there's not a developer on the planet who cares about moving a VM. Absolutely. How do you talk to a developer and get them to come to your cloud? So let's address both sides. So we definitely are IT focused and we have an inside out strategy. When it's IT driven, it's about moving workloads from on-prem to cloud. When you have a developer conversation, it's about building net new applications. Mm -hmm. The application environment in the enterprise is not just about greenfield, but offering application extension. I want to add a mobile front end to my enterprise application in front of my SAP, my ERP system, et cetera. We've announced mobile backend service, for example, as a service on, part, on top of vCloud Air. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to provide those selective use cases where our customers, our enterprise IT developers, if you will, that's our target. It's the enterprise IT developer who's looking to put a mobile front end, who's looking to build a, a digital experience that's integrated back into the, into the use case. So, and you saw the hybrid extension use cases we talked about is really what's driving this. So developer story driven by a customer demand around mobile as a spearhead and building the rich set of services. So we've been talking that. about this a little bit this week. And we had a good discussion with Pat about it. He's like, look, does the, 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 uh, the operations guys, you know, or the developers really want to become operations guys, it's really a lot of, your guys are really ops dev, right? Yep, Supporting absolutely. the developer community. And that's what you're trying to do, is enable it's them, both. is that It's right? both providing them the frameworks and the tools, so in the new development, it's not about building an application from ground up, it's composing applications, right. taking services and, and putting them together, and we're offering those services, but also giving them the tool chain to build new applications in an agile way. Well, I guess it has to be both, right? Because you're trying to expand your TAM into right. new areas. Absolutely. How do, you, how do you take advantage of all the assets in the Federation? I mean, we, we had Rodney Rogers on from Virtustream. He was talking about uh, you know, going after SAP and, and maybe you, you don't need just one cloud. You can use multiple. Uh, you announced an object service, but it's not based on EMC. We have um, an object service, which is EMC as well. Right. We have both, and I can right. tell you why we have uh, two. The cloud, you know, the cloud Foundry service, you know, I, can, I can install it, but I can't get it. Why isn't the Federation stuff tighter? Why isn't it going faster? I mean, it is in the Federation. You will see this accelerate. Uh, and I think we, if you look at the last year in terms of where our progress has been made, EMC object service available today 
our data protection built on Avamar. So very strong leverage around that. Yeah. In the Pivotal case, most of our customers use PaaS for private cloud. That's been the design center. Okay. We have a PWS Enterprise, which is a multi-tenant cloud, that tends to be more a trial cloud. So we're, we're really about the enterprise customer. And okay. the enterprise customer is saying, hey, give me a dedicated PaaS on-prem or vCloud Air, we support that. Okay. Well, they're not asking for our multi-tenant, kind of an engineer or a Heroku. That's not our base. Okay. That tends to be the smaller developer. We're again focused on the enterprise market. So what's a typical customer scenario like? Uh, you guys get a hardcore VMware customer and you start talking to them about the opportunities for hybrid cloud. I'll, and I'll give you three or four different ones just to give us. you the breadth of them, right? right? The simple use case, if it's an IT operation driven one, it's driven around data center migration, it's around data center extension. Mm -hmm. We have the likes of Lodge University that, uh, that, that's looking to completely shut down our data center yep. uh, and move into that. So that's kind of a data center use case. We have Columbia Sports, or we're looking at Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson has the entire dealer network, the point of sale system, running on vCloud Air. We have likes of Betfair. They built an application that's more cloud native, that dynamically when you have a betting and you're right at the last minute, you need to spike up capacity, their application seamlessly spawns into vCloud Air, takes capacity and delivers that. That's a cloud native application that's built around that. So we see the spread, breadth off from everything from data center use cases, extension, uh, capacity on demand use cases, all the way to dev test use cases, DR to really cloud native applications. And that spanned the spectrum with mobile being the newest addition. We have farmers uh, who are starting to build a mobile app. If you saw the My VMware app that you're using today for VMworld, that's running on vCloud Air using our MBAS service. So we're starting to get cover that entire spectrum of enterprise use cases today. Right? Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I, you know, just, just as a piece of, I mean, I would, I would say the ability for you guys to tell that story, right now it comes across as being VMware centric, you know, very VM centric, very infrastructure centric. Right. Um, you're allowing the rest of the cloud industry to sort of define for you what that is. So if, if that's really your story, if your customers are saying, look, I have a ton of applications, you may want to extend them to mobile, but I want to, I want to move them for data center. I mean, that's a huge space. You know, Absolutely. we're, you know, our, our forecast even out till 2016 only say that public cloud becomes a third. There's a huge amount of enterprise applications that need to go somewhere, um, you know, move forward somehow, and, and they need to know how to help with that. So I'll leave you with that. If you have SAP as a workload, and you can move the workload on-prem or cloud, and then extend the workload with mobile, integrate SAP to Salesforce, this is the direction where we're going. Mm -hmm. You saw the keynote, it had mobile front and center. Yeah. It showed a demo of a mobile app that's been built. This is clearly move VMware moving from infrastructure to application services, extending their reach beyond just infrastructure capacity to building that new digital application. That, that's Sanjay's yeah. experience, yeah. that's Sanjay's background. Mm. Yeah. So. so AJ, what, what, last question, what keeps you up at night? Not, keep, not personal stuff, but business yeah, wise. You know, what <laughs> keeps me up at night is really, how do we scale this business even faster? Uh -huh. How do I meet the demand? My challenges have moved from getting customers to scaling the service fast enough to support the customer. The conversation I had with some of my customers today, they wouldn't want to move thousands of VMs in the next six months. How do we ramp up so quickly? How do we support them? How do we advise them? How do we get this scale going? So the challenge is going to be how do we scale quickly I mean, that is, with the floodgates that are so, starting to open up more and critical. more. It's critical. You've got demand on the one end Absolutely. and you've got competition on the other. You've, you've got the scale and you, of course you, you, know, you don't have that lock in at the top end of the apps layer so you uh, know that game well. Uh, That's not your game here. Yeah, so it's got to so, be scale. So AJ, service delivery is great, all about awesome. it. Awesome. A great conversation. Really appreciate you Thank coming. You so the Thank you so much. Appreciate the pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. All right. Keep Absolutely. right there, buddy. We'll be back to wrap VMworld 2015 right after this.